It launched in 2005, February 2005 to be precise. It's uh, quite a funny story really that we'd had the plan and done the pre-planning for mixed martial arts and for an MMA magazine for obviously months prior to it launching. Uh, came up with a brand for the magazine, a name for the magazine after days, weeks, months of debate with various different people to, uh, to call it Ultimate Fighter, which great name. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> launched in exactly the same month, or planned to launch in exactly the same month as a rather famous reality TV show, which uh, obviously at the time, and you know, obviously when the sport was a lot younger then than what it is now, and when everyone, especially us, were a little bit naive about the intellectual property rights of the UFC and so on and so forth, we got a very friendly letter from the UFC lawyers who introduced themselves and heard about the plans and said, you know, we're actually launching this television show, this is the brand, this is what we're doing, would you mind, you know, very politely, would you mind changing the name of your magazine? And obviously straight away we did. Uh, I looked around for another name and I remember driving back from London one night when it came to us that, you know, Fighters Only was a, a really good name, a really good name, you know, a good name for a magazine and a good name for everything else that we do because it reflects what we do, the fact that, you know, we're full of mixed martial artists, full of fighters. A lot of people say it's a look and feel of the magazine. I mean, one thing about the magazine is that, you know, we're, we're perfect bound, we're oversized, um, we're very glossy, um, we have a lot of high quality photography in the magazine. And the one thing that we've always done is that we've always um, treated the sport in a very professional uh, attitude. We have never gone for the whole guts and no gluts, no glory. You know, we've never kind of um, tried selling it as a spectacle. We've always given the sport the respect it deserves and the athletes the respect they deserve as well. We've treated the fighters as people, as personalities, as opposed to just commodities. And one thing that we're really keen um, to do is to present the sport in a way that people who maybe don't uh, follow the sport, who aren't aware of it, they can see the magazine, they can learn about it and hopefully get switched on. Well, over here in the UK, you know, was, the, the, there was always pioneers. I mean, Ian Freeman, you know, the machine. You know, Ian, Ian was, I was Ian's sparring partner for three, four years. That's how I originally got into the sport. And, you know, him and other fighters, you know, that, that really started off traveling around the world and, 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 and sort of fighting in really obscure countries and stuff when it really was so small, you know. Uh, they really started the legacy. They, re they really started the, the, the sport over here in the UK. And then, you had other companies that started bringing out fight promotions and then obviously as the fight promotion started to grow, as the, the popularity of it started to grow, you, you had people who really started to take the plunge and, and uh, you know, try to become trailblazers in their relevant aspects. You know, we, we, we've mentioned Wolf Slam, we've seen the, the impact and the, the, you know, the, the sort of uh, notoriety and the success that they're attaining now, you know, and they're a trailblazer from the UK, you know, the, the, the first real mixed martial arts gym. There's, there's, there's been other gyms there that train in mixed martial arts and there's some other great guys in the UK as well but you know I, re I remember everybody talking because the Wolves there had a cage which was a really big thing in them days you know and that was a real notoriety that got them there and you know talked everybody talking about it and now obviously the fighters which have come out of that camp and the the, the coaches that they've had there and the people that they've brought over you know I, I, they've really blazed the trail over here and that's how they're getting the success that they're getting now, you know. And there's other companies as well, you know, there's guys who have started up the seen niches in marketplaces, you know, businessmen who thought, well, there's a lack in this side of thing as well, you know, the, the fight shop type of company, you know, who's come out and they've, they've dedicated themselves to providing stuff to, to people to be able to buy whatever type of mixed martial arts or combat sports equipment that they want. You know, other promotions which have really dug the heels in and said, you know, we, we're going to make a go of this as well. And everybody's very passionate in the UK, really are. And there's some big trailblazing companies over here. What do I foresee in the future? Well, people who know me and anybody that knows anyone about us will laugh at something like that because, you know, without being bullish or sounding stupid, I want nothing less than worldwide media domination, you know. <laughs> and I know, it's a, it, you know it sounds a funny thing, but I'm a very ambitious guy and very proud of our brand. I think we've got a really fantastic brand. We've got a fantastic product, which you know is, is, is really recognized worldwide now. We've distributed to about 15, 16 countries now for the last two, three years. And uh, you know, I, I don't want to stop until 
you know, every news agent or every outlet or every place where somebody can buy a magazine or view an internet site or listen to a radio station or see a television channel will see fighters only in, in some form of media broadcast. We've exported to the States since we launched. You know, one of the first things that we did is, as well as distributing in the UK, which has always been our mainstay, uh, we've distributed to the US, to Canada, to Australia. And <clears throat> over the years, these things have been building and building and building so much so that, you know, we've reached a point there now as a company, and obviously the sports reached a point specifically in the US that uh, we feel that we're strong enough and we feel we've got a good enough product and we feel that there's been enough people that's been badgering us to, to to actually launch a dedicated US version of the magazine, which it's a, it's a huge thing for us. You know, I, I, I've been to the States numerous occasions. I know how passionate guys are over there for mixed martial arts. You know, we really want to come and bring something different, something new, but also to the guys who have bought and supported us for the last four years, a better service, the ability to subscribe, which they never had before, uh, and more and more things to actually get more and more US information into the magazine on a more dedicated basis and, you know, really hit things hard. As I say, world domination. <laughs>